Hebrews chapter 10, look at the 38th verse. <clears throat> now the just shall live by faith. That happens in Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38, and Habakkuk 2, 4. Now anything God says four times, <laughs> right. but what does it mean? What does it mean to live by faith? Let me give you an example. David, we have that where we can play that clip of Gloria? Please. <clears throat> the way you tell if you've got a spiritual mind or not is when pray? you hear something, when you hear a bad report, are you established in the word or do you cave in? The first thing, when sickness tries to come to you, do you, are you dependent on something else or do you start saying the Word of God? Uh, when you hear on television about how bad things are and so on, I don't think they're as bad as they say either, really. Someone was talking yesterday and they said, well, where we live, people are doing so well. Businesses say they've never had so much business. You can't believe that television if it's not the Word of God. You've got to believe this book here. And even if it were true out there in the, in the world, you're not in the world, you're in God. And that makes all the difference in the world. Glory to God. So you have to have that just ready. You have to be strong. When, when, when uh, discouraging things come to you, do, what do you think about? Do you just rebound? You ought to just rebound with the scripture. I mean, you know, somebody says, well, we're going to have a, a crash in 93, financial crash in 93. Well, up out of Ken's mouth came, no crash for me in 93. <laughs> See, that's what you need to do. You need to rebound with the Word of God. You need it in you and to such a, gr a degree that fear doesn't even have a place to start. I like that. I never said that before. You need to have the Word of God in you to such a degree that fear doesn't have a place to start. You ought to immediately respond with the Word of God. Whatever, whatever it is that's trying to take your peace, your spiritual mind ought to bring up the Word of God to rebuke it and to stop it. Glory to God. Now, <clears throat> now isn't she pretty? Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> she that, and she's mine. <laughs> The people that live by faith all the time are the same way when you get up in the morning, the same way when you go to bed at night, the same way at the breakfast table, the same way, I don't care where you are doing what you are, you're the same way all the time. The person that lives and walks by faith never has to change his lifestyle because of, because of the time. Now, that was 1992. The New York Times article, May 1993, growth in the United States economy slowed to a near standstill <clears throat> in the winter of 93 while inflation sped up. Commerce Department reported yesterday in its second look at economic performance between January and March. The gross domestic product expanded at a barely perceptible rate. First quarter inflation was at the highest since a 4.9% rate the first quarter of 91. So it, and it just gets worse and worse. The United States entered a recession in 1990, which lasted eight months through March 1991. Although the recession was mild, rel and mild relative to other post-war recessions, it was characterized by a sluggish employment recovery, most commonly referred to as a jobless recovery. Now, what a jobless recovery is, I don't I, <laughs> What is that? <laughs> Unemployment continued to rise through June 19, 20, 1992, even though a positive economic growth rate had returned the previous year. KCM donations went up 18%. Why? We said it. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 
And if, you, if, you're, if you're around our place and you say anything else, you're an oddity. Because our household does not tolerate that. And it's, it's so foreign to our ideas that, that there's any possibility we could fail. <sighs> and I hear people, oh, this United States is going down the drain. No, it isn't. No, it's not. No. No, sir. Some of it may. We're not. No, sir. The Word of God's got the drain plug, brother. <laughs> I'm not going down the drain. I'm standing on the Word. But you have to think that way. You have to talk that way. And you have to stay in the book continually, constantly, all the time. It has to become a way of life. Until that's just what you are. And you are that all the time. Now, the pitfall is to get in a habit of being that way and it becomes mental assent and sounds good. The Lord began to talk to me years ago about a positive negative. And uh, you want me to demonstrate one? Now devil, I'm telling you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you have to go. You have to go. You have to go now. I'm telling you, you have to go now. I'm telling you, Satan, you have to leave now. You have to leave now. He's not going anywhere. No, he's not. That's right. You're just badgering me. James 4, 7 says, submit yourself to, to God and then resist the devil. He'll leave. So, Father, I, re- I submit myself to you. Satan, get in the name of Jesus. You're gone. At that point, it doesn't matter how you feel or how it looks. He's gone. And just keep holding the word on him. Just keep holding the word on him. Just keep holding that word on him. Amen. All right. We are going to talk about faith. Now, (laughs) let me read down through these and then we'll go in the direction that the Lord has impressed me to go. Faith, active, living faith is the secret to success. That life is the secret to success. Let's go. Turn the page. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You can put it up on the screen. I want to read that from the classic Amplified, or just listen to me. Now faith is, now that's a statement. Faith is now, hope is future. But you put the two of them together and God's plan comes to pass. The easy way to look at this, hope is faith's blueprint. Real Bible hope is when you see that word that says, by his stripes you were healed and praise God, by his stripes I am. And you, well, how can you dare, how can you hope to say that? Why, why would I not hope? God said it. Well, don't get your hopes up. Well, your faith won't work. Jack it up high as you can get it. Shoot for the moon, brother. <laughs> Faith is God's invisible creative force. Faith is the assurance 
the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being proof of the things we do not see, the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the physical senses. When it becomes real fact, then it belongs to you. Thank you, Dave. When it becomes real fact, then it belongs to you. That's right. Amen. Amen. It's the title deed. It's mine. Praise God. Amen. Can you say amen? All right. Now then. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now Psalm, we won't turn there, but Psalm 33 9 says that, or 19, 33, 19 says that. By his wisdom, he did it. We understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Now, God did not create this universe out of nothing. No, I said it wasn't visible. He right. just said he did it by faith. That's right. That's right. That's right. Praise God. You couldn't see it, but you can sure see the result. Because he said, light be. Yes. The light travels at 186,000 miles a second. Uh-huh. Yeah. 24 hours and there was over 16 billion miles of universe and it's still expanding because he said it and his faith did it. Same thing. Jesus said, Mark 11, 22, have the faith of God. Well, it said have faith in God, but the cross reference says have the faith of God. Well, let's look at the book of Ephesians then because you can't get saved without faith. Verse, in the second chapter of the eighth verse, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. You didn't have any. I didn't have any. (laughs) If I'd already had some, I'd have been in a whole lot better shape than what I was. But I was was in bad shape. I didn't know it. Well, I did too, but I found it out. He just arrested me one night, the second day of November 1962, about 8 o'clock in the evening, North Little Rock, Arkansas. He arrested me. I'd just flown a trip and came in. Gloria waited supper on me. And I came in the living room there. All of a sudden, it just, it just seemed to me like just the whole room filled up. And I just froze and shut my eyes. And I heard him. Kenneth, you don't get right with me. You're going to a devil's hell, son. Well, that'll, that'll get you to thinking. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. It's... Shop taught me up short. I said, I know it. I did know it. But I didn't know what to do. I said, what do I do now? I heard my Sunday school teacher. I was 12 years old. Mrs. Taggart won me to the Lord in 1962. And she was, we called her old lady Taggart. She was old. She called herself Old Lady Tiger. She's a widow woman. <laughs> Wore black all the time. A little black straw hat, a little artificial flower stuck out of it like that. And she taught boys Sunday school. And, well, you know, Southern Baptist Sunday school is too much like school to start with. I mean, they just keep doing grades and all that. Well, they, all of us boys just told the Sunday school superintendent that if we promoted us away from Ms. Taggart, we just wasn't coming back. So they just promoted us and Ms. Taggart along, along with us. And, um, and that's the reason why, because she always led her boys to the Lord. Well, she finally got me after a lot of years. 
but I heard her voice. That seed was still on the inside of me. Now, you know what that says to me? Mrs. Taggart had faith in her words. They stuck to me for all those years. Because I was 25 years old. So they'd been with me, I guess, you know, 12, 13 years. I heard her voice. I reckon I said, that's old lady Taggart. She said, boys, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. Only she said it her way. Boys, you have to ask Jesus to come into your heart. And I, and I, I thought, well, that sounds just as dumb as it did the first time I heard it, but I don't know what else to do. Because I, 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 other than her, I'd never heard that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. Now, in 1963, Gloria and I, in January then, of 63, this is 2023. Now, how long was that? <laughs> That's a long time ago. We were both baptized in the Holy Ghost. When she received the Holy Spirit is the first time she ever heard the term born again. We were scripturally literates, both of us. Every time we saw us church people, we wanted to find out what is in there. And I read things. First time I read this 11th chapter of Hebrews, I said, Gloria, I found the hall of fame right here. I said, we figure out how to get this faith. We got something. Amen. Come on. Right. Praise God. Well, then Brother Hagin came along. We figured, <laughs> figured out we already had it. It was the faith of God. But you can't go any further into this without realizing that all of this, well, let's get over there in the book of Hebrews. I'm still in Ephesians. All of this entire 11th chapter has to do with this creative force in the lives of all the people up to there. Faith. God started it in faith and Malachi was ministering in faith when he finished it up. Praise God. Praise By faith. By faith, 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 by faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. By faith. Abel offered to God, unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. By faith, he offered it. Yes. He did it by faith. Well, what does that mean? He had come to that place there where in his inner man that this powerful force was so alive in him that he gave God the best he had. Don't get the idea now that, that Cain was in trouble because he didn't have a lamb. No. That's not right. No, that's right. Yes, sir. He maybe could have bought one from Abel, but that wasn't the issue. No, that's right. He's a farmer. Yeah. But if you study it, he was, he was taking God the nubbins. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you're not from a country, you don't know what that is. <laughs> that's when you keep the best corn and... Yeah. Yeah. Give God the nubbins, yeah. the runs. Uh -huh. yeah. Praise God. Yeah. I was very impressed with what Oral Roberts said. His family uh, were corn farmers. And his dad told his boys, he said, now boys, we take the best of this crop, the best we have, separate the best and biggest ears of corn, put them aside. We're not going to eat those. That's our seed corn. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. We're going to sow the best. We take the best corn and sow the best seed. Yes. Yes. Because he said, if we keep sowing, and if we eat the nubbins and keep sowing the best, within five years, the nubbins will be as good as the best was five years ago. 
That's what faith will do to your cross. Particularly if you're tithing and you give him the best. And he said, now that's the way God does things. He gave us his best, the very best. And he did it by faith. Well, how can you say that? How can you say God gave Jesus by faith? It says he did. He gave his only begotten son so that many sons could come to glory. He planted him as a seed. If he had no plan for a seed, then it was a murder. Come on, son. Come on, son. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a seed. It was a seed. And it worked. It got me. And it got you. It worked. And a lot more of them are coming. More now than ever before. In 2023, join Kenneth Copeland at these free KCM events to build your faith and live in victory. April 13 through 15, join us at the Branson Victory Campaign in Branson, Missouri. June 22 through 24, Chattanooga Victory Campaign in Chattanooga, Tennessee. July 31 through August 5, don't miss our annual meeting at the Southwest Believers Convention in Fort Worth, Texas. Go to kcm.org slash events for more information. Jesus came that you might have life and life more abundantly. But how do you make abundance a reality and a part of your everyday life? Learn how to access and release the same faith of Jesus Christ with Kenneth Copeland's teaching, Faith in the Heart of a Believer, so you can see God's promises come alive in your life. You've been set free from the whole curse, which means Jesus is your Lord, your Savior, healer, and provider. Discover the spiritual strength that comes from not only hearing and speaking the word, but meditating on it so that your mind is transformed. Just like you took hold of salvation in Christ, you can use your faith like a tool that reaches out and takes hold of the goodness of God. Step out of confusion and into the faith-filled realm of being fully persuaded of God's promises. Turn loose the force of faith inside of you and live in the freedom and wholeness God has for you. Order your free copy of Faith in the Heart of a Believer, a CD series by Kenneth Copeland. As you release the powerhouse of faith in your heart, it will not only change your life, it will also change everything and everyone you encounter. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. I was born and raised uh, a Jehovah Witness, and so I didn't know that heaven or hell was real. And I'd always prayed to God uh, in Jesus' name, but we were never allowed to, to speak to Jesus. So I didn't realize my whole life when I thought that I had had God or that I had some sort of relationship with God that I, in all actuality, I really didn't. So when I was 18, I left the religion. But my whole life, I always lived that that was the truth. I didn't, like I was teaching my son, there was no heaven, there was no hell. I didn't know any different. So my sister sent me a Gloria Copeland YouTube clip, um, Redeemed from the Curse. It was a healing school. And she, she sent it to me one time. And my sister, she's been connected with KCM for 25 years or so. And um, she was always, you know, Jesus, Jesus, God, God, and I'm just, I gotta go, you know? <laughs> so I was never really had that close relationship with her. But at this time, when she sent this, God knew exactly what was the right time and when and what. So she sends me this clip and um, it's a two and a half hour clip. And, and she's like, you gotta start somewhere, Nicole. So um, I did, um, I, I watched the YouTube that night at 10 o'clock at night. And I know I was born again that first time around and because, and I was so excited, I wanted to see it again. So it was like one o'clock in the morning and I just pushed play again. The next morning when I woke up, first of all, I never had another cuss word again. I mean, profanity for me was part of my life and it was instantly gone. I was just, you know, a shucky darn, you know, the next day and I didn't even realize what had happened. And I realized, oh my land, that video last night, you know, I still didn't know I was born again. I didn't know I was saved. I didn't understand the situation. 
So I called my sister and, you know, I talked to her for a little bit and, you know, a week or two went by and the Lord was talking to me. I didn't realize what was happening, but he was, you know, putting things, you know, explaining things to me, but why I'm not, why I'm not cussing anymore. And, and just these things were coming together a little bit, but I still didn't know what had happened. And I kept seeing the word tent, T-E-N-T. And the next day, my sister was talking to me and she said, I can't wait for Wednesday, the tent revival starts. And I said, oh my land, Angie, I gotta go. Like I, I tent, T-E-N-T revival, tent revival, I gotta go, I gotta be there. And I flew out the next day and I made it to the tent revival. And as I'm coming in the, the gate, um, my sister was, you know, waving to people and oh, this is my sister. She just got saved from a Gloria Copeland video last week. And, and I'm like, I was what? And she said, yeah, you're, you're born again. I said, what, what do you mean? She said, you're going to heaven. I said, I'm going to heaven? And she's like, yes, didn't I tell you, honey? You're going to heaven. I was like, wow, oh my goodness. I mean, I had a whole, you know, a whole episode there just at the gate walking in, realizing that I'm going to heaven, you know, because the day after I was born again, I instantly knew there was a heaven and a hell, no matter what I was taught as a child. I knew, I knew there was heaven and hell, it was real. I, I knew so many things that next day that was just in me. And I just, there was no question about it. The changes that God has made in me over the last few months, just being in this atmosphere of faith has been amazing. It's affecting the whole family, it's a beautiful thing. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Nicole got born again simply by watching Gloria Copeland's video that her sister gave her. She received the word of God that Miss Gloria was preaching and her life was changed forever. Jesus became real to her and she was free from everything he redeemed her from. She has a new life in Christ that includes eternal life, healing and prosperity. If you're ready to say yes to Jesus, pray this prayer with me. Lord, I confess my sins before you. I turn my life over completely. Take over and be the Lord of my life. I receive you as my savior. I receive your Holy Spirit. Thank you that I'm born again. I am filled with new life. Amen. Kenneth Copeland Ministries has a gift to send you called The Salvation Package. It has a book called He Did It All For You by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and two brochures to help you start reading and studying your Bible. Request your salvation package free on kcm.org. Well, join us again tomorrow as we continue to lift up the name of Jesus and give him praise. This is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Learn more about who you are in Jesus and who He is in you. Request the Salvation Package free on kcm.org salvation.